working on my 22250 project for my friend. Uh, this video we're going to discuss the cartridge, the history of it, and the versatility of it. But also, before you run out and get a rifle, there is a very wide range of bullets from 35 grains to 90 grains uh, in weight. And depending on which gun you're going to buy from which company, you have to decide on the twist rate because it varies from one company to the other. And this will determine how you'll get the best accuracy with the bullet weight. So my advice, and once I explain this, is figure out what bullet weight you'd like. And then I looked up a few companies, and I'll show you the accompanying uh, twist rate chart. And how it will affect performance. So if you go and buy a gun and it has the wrong twist rate for the type of bullet you're trying to use, you will get frustrated. Alright, so let's go and start with the cartridge itself, the history of it. You go to Wikipedia and you could find the whole explanation on there. Pretty simple. Just type it in a Google search. 22250 Remington. That is the actual official name. It had several other names, but this is what that cartridge is called now. And not the 22250 Improved or 22 Swift or whatever, which are very similar. 22-250 Remington is what we're talking about. Alright, now do this briefly. Um, 22-250 Remington, it, it used to be a Wildcat cartridge back in the early 30s. It was designed in 1937, and its parent cartridge was a 250-300 Savage case, which that was developed in 1915 and was chambered in Savage lever action rifles. Okay. It gives you the name of the designers, and they went and designed this cartridge and come up with the final design in 1937, and it was available only with custom gunsmiths. And it was versatile. It's outperformed by the 220 Swift, okay, it was another cartridge that uh, outperformed it kind of overshadowed it, but the thing is the versatility of this cartridge you can handle it says here uh, the case permits most flexible loading ever recorded with a single cartridge it will handle velocities from 1500 feet per second to 4500 and what it is, is uh, it's the 28 degree shoulder that helps this. And what it is, that steep shoulder has the powder burning in the case other than the barrel. So they say there's something about the design. And as you see, they show you here all the angles and everything. And that you can look all this up. Uh, and it is very versatile. Okay. So that's the history of it. Now, what I was saying about twist rates on the charts. This here, you can look this up, just uh, 22250 twist rate chart and you'll find this. But when you were getting into the 4,000 feet per second, that's with a 35 grain bullet. In the old days, they had the 35, 40, 45, 50. And the original guns were generally with a 1 in 14 twist rate. And as you see on the chart, it says good all the way up to about 50 grains. Okay at 55. And then poor 60 and above. Now I believe Hootie Who has a CVA. And when I went there, you know, and just briefly looking through their specs... I found that that rifle has a 1 in 12 twist. I think Mossberg 
their uh, low end, the Patriot with a plastic stock. You can look it up, but I think the Mossberg has a one in 14 inch uh, twist rate in the barrel. The uh, CVA has a one in 12. Now, the uh, Ruger has a one in 10, and I'm pretty sure. The Savage Access, because I was just trying to glance and check, has also has a 1 in 10. Now as you see, the 1 in 12, 35 grain, okay. 45, 50, 55, okay, is all good. Then you get to okay and then heavy pour, the heavy bullet is poor performance. This is kind of the standard that was made for years the 1 and 12 because most ammunition manufacturers make 45, 50 or 55 grain ammo that was the most common commercial uh, ammo available alright why Ruger went with the 1 and 10 is it would give fairly decent It's this is the only one the 1 and 10 it's okay good is the 60 grain that's why I went with the 60 grain, and I'll explain that a little later. And it'll actually use a 90 somewhat good. Now, 1 and 9, I don't know if they're out there. As you see, the lower ones, 35 and 40, are poor. You're kind of okay with 45, 50, and a 1 and 9, you're good, and good up there at 60 and above to a 90 grain bullet. 1 and 8, and there was a special contract uh, gun made by Ruger with a super fast twist rate, and it was made for a comp another company, so it'll have a different name on it, and people were asking about it, because when I went and took it out to shoot it, as you see, all the common stuff is poor, and you're not getting good results. That was basically made for like a 90 or maybe a 100 grain. I don't know if they even make 100 grain bullets. But that was a specialized gun. So that's why it's kind of important to figure out what kind of ammo you want to shoot, whether you reload or not, what bullet weight, and marry it up to the twist rate. Uh, you know, in general, a 1 and 12 is good, and they'll handle, you know, 45 to 55, which is common. Uh, and a 1 in 10s seem to give uh, good performance all the way across the board, but good with 60. So, something to uh, think about before you run out and buy a gun or what you're doing. There's a little bit of thought you're going to have to put in this caliber. Alright, so... When he told me he wants to use the gun to shoot some coyotes, he wasn't kind of satisfied with the accuracy and was going on. I said I'd look at it. Well, he gave me some of the ammo he was using, and it's 50 grain bullets. I'll show you here one of the cartridges. And you see it's got a real kind of a sharp shoulder. This is what kind of helps it become accurate. And I went and fired it just to see, and this is at 50 yards. And as you see here, the, uh, the four shots, about a two inch group in there. Not quite. Now the first one hit the diamond, so the scope's on, but after that the other three shots kind of went high to the left. So my goal was to improve on that through hand loading. And hand loading, another thing is I went and looked at some load data. This thing has been around since 1937. Uh, very versatile, as you see with the wide array of bullets. But just these... 60 grain Sierras, and there is a warning here on this 10 inch twist rate or faster. Okay, it tells you right there. And, it, and you will find that there is just about any powder I have, the IMR powders, uh, you can find loads for, uh, let me see, IMR 4064, BCL, uh, the ball two that I use in the 3030, 
um, a lot of IMRs and a whole vast assortment. So this would be a good gun if you could find the right bullet weight and with the wide variety of powders that you have published data. There's a lot of these jugs that I use to experiment with and I got like half a pound or something. A cartridge like this, you can probably fool around and use up all your odd lots. You're loading on average about say 30, 40 grains of powder, depending on the powder. Could be more, could be less. Okay, but you're looking at 40 grains. There's 7,000 grains in a pound, so give you an idea. All right, well, that's one thing. We're going to go on next to the reloading equipment or the tools you need. And then we'll talk about the load. Then we'll go on to the load I picked and why. All right, and we'll talk about the powder, which is new. So that's another thing in this project. We're using a brand new powder that uh, not a lot of information on. And that, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned.